Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit seven, lesson three, powers of powers of 10. Problem number one, write each expression with a single exponent. A, 10 to the seventh power, all squared. That means 10 to the seventh power squared, or 10 to the seventh power times 10 to the seventh power. Exponent seven plus exponent seven equals exponent 14. 10 to the seventh power all squared equals 10 to the power of 14. B, 10 to the ninth all cubed. That means 10 to the ninth times 10 to the ninth times 10 to the ninth. Exponent nine plus exponent nine plus exponent nine equals exponent 27. 10 to the ninth power all cubed equals 10 to the power of 27. C, 10 to the sixth power all cubed. That means 10 to the sixth power times 10 to the sixth power times 10 to the sixth power. Exponent six plus exponent six plus exponent six equals exponent 18. So 10 to the sixth power all cubed equals 10 to the power of 18. D, 10 to the second power all cubed. That means 10 squared times 10 squared times 10 squared. Exponent two plus exponent two plus exponent two equals exponent six. 10 to the power of two all cubed equals 10 to the power of six. E, 10 to the third power all squared. That means 10 to the third power times 10 to the third power. Exponent three plus exponent three equals exponent six. So 10 to the third power all squared equals 10 to the sixth power. F, 10 to the fifth power all to the seventh power. For this one, I'd like to show you a different way. You can multiply that exponent five times the exponent that's on the outside of the parentheses, and five times seven is 35. So F would be 10 to the 35th power. Let's go back and use this strategy on the previous problems. A, 10 to the seventh power, all to the second power. So exponent seven on the inside times exponent two on the outside. And the answer would be 10 to the power of 14. B, 10 to the ninth power, all to the third power. Exponent nine times exponent three equals exponent 27, 10 to the power of 27. C, 10 to the power of six, all to the power of three. Exponent six, times exponent three on the outside equals 10 to the power of 18. D, 10 squared all to the third power. Exponent two times exponent three equals exponent six, 10 to the power of six. E, 10 to the third power all squared. So exponent three times exponent two equals exponent six, 10 to the power of six. And of course F, 10 to the power of five all to the seventh power. Exponent five times the exponent seven on the outside of the parentheses, and the answer is 10 to the power of 35. Problem number two, you have one million number cubes, each measuring one inch on a side. A, if you stack the cubes on top of one another to make an enormous tower, how high would they reach? Explain your reasoning. If the side of each cube measured one inch and you stacked a million cubes on top of one another, the height of the tower would be one million inches. B, if you arrange the cubes on the floor to make a square, would the square fit in your classroom? What would its dimensions be? Explain your reasoning. The side lengths of the square would be a thousand inches long to form a square that has an area of a million inches squared. Since one foot is 12 inches, we can divide a thousand inches by 12 and that equals 83.3 feet. A square with side lengths of 83.3 feet long would make an awfully large square, probably too big for a classroom. C, if you layered the cubes to make one big cube, what would be the dimensions of the big cube? Explain your reasoning. The side lengths would be 100 inches because 100 times 100 times 100 equals 1 million inches cubed. 
and we have one million cubes with side lengths of one inch. Problem number three from eighth grade unit seven lesson one. An amoeba divides to form two amoebas after one hour. One hour later, each of the two amoebas divides to form two more. Every hour, each amoeba divides to form two more. If we sketch this out, we'll have a better visual. Hour zero, we start with one amoeba. After one hour, there's two amoeba. After two hours, there's four amoeba. And after three hours, there's eight amoeba. We answered A because after one hour, there were two amoeba. And we answered B, after two hours, there were four amoeba. C, write an expression for the number of amoeba after six hours. Let's go back to our illustration and you'll notice a pattern. At hour zero, when there's one amoeba, the expression is two to the power of zero. After hour one, when there's two amoeba, the expression is two to the power of one. After two hours, the expression is two to the power of two. After three hours, the expression is two to the power of three. I can continue to follow this pattern, and after six hours, the expression would be two to the power of six, and two to the power of six is 64. So the number of amoeba after six hours would be 64. D, write an expression for the number of amoeba after 24 hours. I'm going to continue with this pattern, and the expression will be two to the power of 24, and two to the power of 24 is 16,777,216. E. Why might exponential notation be preferable to answer these questions? Exponential notation is much simpler to write than very large numbers or very small numbers. And what I mean by very large or small numbers is numbers that have many place values. Problem number four from eighth grade unit four, lesson 15. Elena noticed that nine years ago, her cousin Katie was twice as old as Elena was then. Then Elena said, in four years, I'll be as old as Katie is now. If Elena is currently E years old and Katie is K years old, which system of equations matches the story? Since Elena noticed this nine years ago, that would have been Elena's age minus nine and Katie's age minus nine. And so nine years ago, Katie was twice as old as Elena. So I'm going to go with D. K minus nine equals two times E minus nine. And E plus four equals K, which is Elena's age plus four equals Katie's age. I think that nine years ago, Elena must have been four years old and Katie must have been eight years old. Now, Elena is 13 years old and Katie is 17 years old.